a special guest here who's going to give, uh, he says a short devotion, but we, we expect four hours. That's how long I preach for. <laughs> no. Um, uh, it's Mr. Parks with the Fishers of Men. If you don't come to business meetings, then shame. <laughs> Uh, one of the things that we have all agreed to uh, during a business meeting was that we would be hosting the Fishers of Men tournament that's going to happen every month on a, well, they're going to come in, uh, we're going to have a little dinner for them ready, we're going to fix food. Um, I have been told that I cannot prepare the main dish, just by Nate. I, people tend to get sick after I fix food. I can order pizza and people will get sick. So we're also going to uh, uh, provide um, the men that come a devotion slash message. And uh, this is going to happen once a month for the, what, the next six weeks, six months. Uh, looking forward to it. So it's another way that we're going to minister. So I'm not going to really tell you too much about it, but Mr. Parks will. Sir, if you could come on up, we'd appreciate it. Give him a big... Special, by the way. I am, if you haven't noticed, I am willing to make a fool of myself, though. Um, I, I really appreciate you guys inviting me here today to talk about Fishers of Man. Uh, it's something that is really near and dear to my heart. Uh, just to give you a little background about uh, Fishers of Men in general, it was started by a man named Al Odom. He lives in Sumter, South Carolina. He has a real nice accent. You know, them southern guys, them country guys, they got something you can't, you know, reproduce. Uh, Al told me that Fishers and Man, when he first started it, was the best sermon he never heard. Okay, the preacher was talking about uh, Matthew, he was in Matthew, Matthew the verse 4:19. Jesus said to you know some of the first people Jesus came in contact with were fishermen. So he said, "Come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men." You know these guys were used to catching fish, and Jesus was telling them to come follow him. Al heard fishing. You know Al was a bass fishing tournament. Uh, guy he loved to bass fish, so that was God speaking to Al, saying, "Hey, you know, maybe you ought to take this love of bass fishing that you have and use it to share the gospel with fishermen." So Al started Fishers of Man back in 1998. Uh, I think the first year they started with like four divisions. There was an Indiana division, South Carolina, and I don't know where the other two were. But since then. Uh, as of this year, I think there are 78 divisions in 25 states. So it's one of the biggest, largest, fastest growing bass fishing tournament trails in the country. Uh, what those things consist of, it, it's obviously bass fishing tournaments. It's team bass fishing tournaments. This is not just your normal people who, anybody like to fish in here besides me? All right. It's not your normal fishing, but it's, these guys are hardcore tournament anglers like you see on the TV. Uh, they just wish they were on the TV. <laughs> but what it does is, you know, basically what it is, is, we're taking the gospel and taking it to these guys who normally are fishing bass tournaments on Sunday. Or they'll fish them Saturday, Sunday. They'll fish them any day they can. Uh, but basically, we'll hold all our tournaments on a Saturday, uh, Friday night. Before each tournament, we have a pre-tournament meeting, which consists of the meal. Um, uh, after dinner, we give them the gospel message and pass out door prizes. Go over tournament information the night before. Saturday morning, it's all about fishing. Saturday morning, we show up before it even is light out. You know, we're having all our tournaments at Clinton Lake. So I'll be there in the dark, checking live wells, tying ribbons around people's uh, trolling motors. We get them in the water. The coolest part, if you ever get a chance to see this, is right before I blast them off. You get 20, 30 boats out there in the water, and they're all chugging along, and everybody's, you know, anticipating the days of fishing. And we get them out there, and I'll get them out there. Has anybody been familiar with Clinton Lake? You know where the break wall is out there? I'll pull a boat up out there, and I'll get them out there, and they'll start coming towards the mouth of that thing. And then they'll see my little bullhorn, get ready, and then I'll, I won't even have to say anything. They just shut their motors down. It gets real quiet. You know, it's, lights just getting, you know, the, her, the, you know, the sunset's just starting to come up. It's very peaceful. I'll say a prayer over the bullhorn, and you'll see all these guys bow their heads. And as soon as the prayer is over, it's boom, you know, it is, it's one of my favorite times. <laughs> Most people don't get to see it because they don't get up at 3 a.m. like I do. Uh, but that's basically the nuts and bolts. You know, they go out there and fish for eight, ten hours, come in, you know, they're competitive, they're fishing for a good paycheck. I mean, 
it's different than most ministries that you've ever seen. Now, now you've got the gist of it. I'll tell you how I got involved with it. Um, this is a little part of my testimony. When I got saved, I was constantly asking God, what do you want me to do? What am I to do? You know, if any of you have ever done this before, you know, don't feel bad because I was there. I was doing it constantly. What am I, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? And I was always thinking, do you want me to be a good husband, a good father? What? Those things are kind of given. And, you know, I, I did that for a while. Uh, we go to Indiana Beach every year for vacation. Anybody go to Indiana Beach? We love it. I was over there and I was in a tackle store and I was bass fishing, you know. I loved to bass fish. Never really got into big, big tournaments, but I started fishing a little bass club where I fished some tournaments. And I was in this uh, tackle store and I saw these pamphlets for fishers of men. And I looked at it and I saw it in Matthew 419. I'm like, wow, that's, that's a Christian organization. So I pick it up and I'm looking through it. No Illinois division. And I'm like, man. Well, that's that's out. So I put that down and just kind of didn't pay it no mind. I think it was probably a year later, maybe six months, eight months later. I was actually doing some web surfing, looking at a bass fishing website or something. There was a link to the Fisher's Men. I saw that logo, this logo right here. So I click on it. Boom, it takes me to the Fisher's Men website. And it says, Directors Wanted. And I'm like, ooh. <laughs> you know, I know that they're fishing for... Uh, just to give you a little bit of, we're, we're holding, a, our division has five tournaments on Clinton Lake. Well, they're qualifying to go to a regional championship and a national championship where they can fish for a brand new, you know. The, the national championships happened this weekend in uh, Pickwick down in Alabama, I believe. The winner got a $74,000 bass boat. You know, brand new $74,000 bass boat. Um, that's kind of, you know, what grabs them. The bass fishermen, they grabs them. And I'm looking at it going, ooh, you know. Uh, wow, I wonder how hard it would be for me to get a Fishers and Men division started in Illinois so I could fish for that boat. You know, I'm like, yes! So I called the uh, Vice President, Bob Eads, and I start talking to him and start asking him questions about how to get a division started. And we're talking, and he's like, oh man, that's great, I'd love to help you get a division started. Uh, he said, here's what you need. You need to get a hold of your DNR and find out what your regulations are. You need to set some dates for your tournaments for next year. And I think this was right around October um, that year. So I had plenty of time to start this thing. And he's like, oh man, I'm, you know, he was excited. I was excited um, for more, you know, I was excited for more reasons than one. Uh, I was gonna get to run a bass fishing tournament and I was gonna get to fish for these, you know, fancy bass boats. <laughs> and at the end of our conversation, he says, oh, hey, by the way, if you're going to be the director for this, you can't fish. You can't fish in your own tournaments. And right at that very moment was I heard God. You remember you were asking me what you want what, what you what you want you keep asking, what do you want me to do? This is it. Finally, it's time for you to do something for someone other than yourself because my whole life has been about self-serving, selfishness, spoiled. I was a spoiled brat as a kid. If my mom was here, she'd tell you that. Uh, so I heard God at that very moment and the thing that separated that moment from all the other moments is I said okay you know I said yes I said you know this is what I've been asking for here it is what a blessing to be able to use the passion that I have for bass fishing to you know do something for God and for others little did I know that it was going to take me clean out of my comfort zones I'd never spoken in front of people before, ever. <laughs> uh, you know, at parties maybe, but uh, you know, I had to learn how to go out and talk to people about Fishers and Men. I had to go out and, and uh, raise money to get the equipment to get started. Uh, I think that first year, I got, I think I raised $1,500. I bought some scales, a tent, uh, uh, one table, you know, a plastic table, a tank, and we ran our first tournament at Clinton Lake. We had seven boats. Um, and I gave my testimony that night for the, well, first time in front of a bunch of strangers anyway. Uh, so really, Fishers and Men has taken me out of my comfort zone. I've preached the gospel many times now because, you know, I don't always have somebody who wants to come speak. Um, 
But we are very blessed to have you as a congregation to a you know, take us in this year. I want to encourage you and let you know that this is something that no one's ever done. Um, we've been in Farmer City before. Uh, they, we've had a couple churches host one here and there, but I tell you what, me and Heather, this is my wife Heather. She she helps me a lot. When we were at Clinton Lake for three years straight, we were averaging 30 boats, which is 60 grown men, and that's a lot of food. Uh, it's also a lot to deal with. Um, you know, organizing the event. We didn't really have any support those three years. I mean, we'd like to say we'd have a church here or there plug in and hit us with one meal. For you guys to take on five is truly answered prayer. Um, so I want you to be encouraged that this is something that uh, you're taking part of the ministry. You're going to get to see it with your own eyes. If you're at the meetings or if you're serving food or whatever, if you're helping us in any way, you will get to see uh, what's going on. Also, for you fishermen out there, Saturday, uh, we put on a great big show. This is not just a tailgate weigh-in that you might have seen in the parking lot of Clinton Lake. We put on, we have a great big stage, 16 foot long trailer with a big flip up sign that's you know, tall as that. Uh, tanks and tents and you know, we need people to come and help uh, run the weigh-in. My wife won't even touch a fish. But she's there doing the, she does the computer. Like we have scales that will, uh, you know, go from the scale to the computer and then it'll print out a little slip. We hand out weigh-in bags, we put the tents up, we do all the, I mean, there's a lot of serving that goes on. And the more people we got, the easier it runs. So if you're interested in any of that, uh, please see me after work because I'd love to plug you in. And coming back, you know, we, we, uh, we've done this, this would be our eighth season doing this. The first couple of years, we went all over the place. We went to different lakes and thought, you know, we would pick up boats as we went and people would come once they found out about it. Well, it didn't really work good that way. And with the economy the way it is, you know, the gas prices got up around four or five dollars. We started going to Clinton. And when we stayed at Clinton, the boats came. Boom, boom, boom. I mean, we had 30 boats like that. And last couple of years, we left Clinton and went, tried to do some other things, reach some other people. Um, and I can't say it's been in vain because, you know, a man and his son were saved last year because of what we did. So it was all worth it, right? Um, but going from 30 boats back to 10, averaging 10 is kind of humbling. You know, it makes you refocus what, what you want to do. Was that we had five sometimes? Yeah, it was, it was pretty bad. Uh, and there's a lot of anglers over here, a lot of hardcore tournament anglers in Mansfield and Monticello and Clinton and Weldon and Champaign and it's just we have teams from Chicago that will be coming to this um, so it's a pretty big deal so you guys are going to be part of something really cool uh, you get to plug into a really neat unique type of ministry and we are very 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 thankful that you have taken us in so uh, that's pretty much all I got any questions no all right well thanks appreciate it